Hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Lindicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about as the traditional role of the CIO keeps evolving, 2019 promises higher pressure on them to deliver IT solutions that will meet the expectations of the customer customers, partners and employees. It is imperative of the CIOs to see the cloud computing as a critical element of their competitiveness. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips for the C-levels. Hi Dave, great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. It's great to be here and this is kind of a great article. Love to talk about this. Yeah, no, it really is a great article. I mean, what, what do you see as being the main trends that are going to be meaningful to the C-levels, Dave? Well, I, I think Number one, I th let's just talk about the IDC uh, stuff that they're, you know, saying reaching 60% of all IT infrastructure in 2018. I, I don't think the numbers really kind of add up on that. I'm a cloud advocate, but I think that, uh, you know, that's going to be many billion dollars that uh, is they're saying is going to be spent in cloud. And it, it, it probably won't approach that as much in 2018. Just to just to go ahead and set expectations, right? It's going to be a significant amount, but it's not going to necessarily be 50% or 60%. It's probably more like 30% or 45% going forward. But you know, that said, spending is going to start increasing in cloud computing, and I don't think the CIOs are prepared for really dealing with that. So. They don't understand multi-cloud, cloud security, identity access management, governance. Um, you know, they're not paying attention. I think what a lot of the trends are really kind of telling them and how to leverage this technology effectively. So going forward, it's um, a really good thing for CIOs to become very smart in cloud computing very quickly. Uh, the folks I'm talking to out there don't necessarily understand it as well as they should. They kind of view it as kind of a next generation of computing, which has been kind of a common pattern for some time. But if you think of cloud computing, it's kind of multi-tenant, shared resources, secure, shared security platforms, um, you know, shared governance systems, things like that. Things they haven't necessarily been dealing with for the last 30 years, you know, since the time sharing days. And now we have more sophisticated hackers and more sophisticated securities required and ways in which you think about how you're going to implement this technology is going to be vastly different than way in which we did hardware and software going forward. And so the concerning point would be just kind of the education of the sea levels and kind of paying attention and asking the questions that need to be asked and how things are moving forward. Because I, I do think there's going to be a bit of a, uh, of a hangover, a backlash that occurs in 2020 you know, 2021, as we, you know, reach the saturation point in cloud computing and say that's 60 to 70 percent, I don't think we're going to hit it in 2020. I think it's more like 2021, 2023. Then what's going to happen is a lot of the mistakes, um, you know, as we say in the States, the chickens are going to come home to roost. And we're going to see everything that was left open is really something that people skipped over whether it's a security vulnerability or whether it's a governance vulnerability or no use based accounting and, you know, all the boring geeky things you have to deal with with cloud computing because the questions weren't asked or the, the tasks weren't demanded, you know, by the executives, including the CIO, it's going to come home and be kind of a, you know, what I call a technological hangover, which we seem to have a few years after we adapt and move after whatever the new shiny object is, in this case, cloud computing. Yeah, you're right. And it, goes, it follows on nicely from the Australia show we've done this week, isn't it? Where, you know, Australia have uh, signed a one billion Australian dollar contract with IBM. Uh, and, and like you said, you know, there's going to be some hardware deals involved there. And, uh, you know, the involvement of that hardware, is that going to be the right option when the, the deals are up for I think it's 2023 or something, wasn't it? So, you know, there's, there's some, I think it's, thinking almost ahead of where the, the industry is and where you need to be from a, a security point of view, from a compliance point of view, from a, an infrastructure point of view, the dynamics of, of how the, your organization is positioned within a SaaS environment. I think there's, there's so many levels that need to be looked at by the C levels. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things, that, um, you know, it's like GDPR coming in and, and how much compliance and, and governance needs to be around that from a, an industry, not only from a, a business point of view, but also from a, a third party user point of view. So who you're using to, you know, hold the data or manage the data or use the data. So there's so many complexities there, isn't there, Dave? 
Yeah, there is. And I, I think that the uh, CIOs are really kind of depending on their lieutenants to, you know, make sure they're advising them with the way to go. And I think lieutenants are way over their head in terms of understanding the technology. And I understand why. I mean, it's been a huge change in the last three years in terms of how we're consuming compute and storage and databases and security and all these sorts of things. And while they think they understand kind of the core concepts, they probably don't understand as much in terms of what's different in terms of what has to happen in terms of their ability to do security and governance and compliance, as you mentioned, all these other things, which are really, really important. And so, you know, going forward, um, the CIOs are going to be held responsible for this. They're the ones who are going to be fired. You know, when we do hit the hangover, you know, in 2020, you know, 2021, 2022 and 23. And that can be easily avoided if they just make sure that there's a process installed to ensure that we're getting the right people in the job or understanding, educating ourselves in terms of how these things are going to be managed and how these things are going to be operated, how DevOps fits in, all these other things to kind of get from a very complex, um, not well-maintained environment, which most enterprises have, you know, to something that's going to be well thought out, well-maintained. Um, you know, really kind of engineered to change. DevOps is going to be systemic to the part of it. Security is going to be systemic. And that's a long way to go between the as is state and the to be state. And, and my concern is a lot of enterprises aren't going to make it. I think the complexity is just going to overwhelm them. So, you know, CIOs get a clue. I mean, go you know, go take some courses and read some books and, you know, start holding some people's feet to the fire in terms of how we're going to leverage this technology correctly. And I I think if you don't, your job's going to be at risk, and, and perhaps it should be. Yep, there's a lot of fear out there, Dave. You're absolutely right, 100%. And that leads us on really nicely to close the show on your top three tips for the sea levels on this topic. So, yeah, it'd be great to hear your top three tips. Yeah, first, you know, you need to justify all spending, including cloud spending. And, and I can't stress this enough. So if we're thinking about what we're going to do with this technology, it has to have a business case that's associated with it. I mean, my concern is that, you know, if indeed it's someday gonna be 60% or 70%, I think we're gonna saturate at that point, by the way, just because we can't move everything to the cloud, that we don't have an understanding or a clear understanding in terms of the business value that we're bringing around the, the movement to this technology. And I think each and every workload that moves into the cloud should have a business case associated with it. It's not a lot of work to really kind of understand the value but it's going to pay dividends in terms of our metrics to really kind of understand how we're improving the business. And I would do it as a CIO, you know, just to kind of gloat, you know, to the board of directors in terms of how well things are going, you know, based on the metrics I'm gathering and moving forward, I guess, unless they're bad metrics. But uh, those tendency, those have a tendency never to show their face in board meetings, as I found out. Uh, security needs to be, be a priority and it's different security. So we're not dealing with you know, RACF and mainframe based security of the past. We're dealing with identity access management. We're dealing with advanced encryption techniques. We're dealing with encryption at flight, encryption at rest, all these sorts of things that really need to have a true cyber security professional really kind of, uh, you know, mounting the understanding of how this thing's going to be a holistic security strategy going forward. So no longer are we protecting things down at the database level and at the application level or at the system level. We're protecting things holistically, you know, at the complete enterprise level. So everything has an identity. Everything needs to be checked in. Everything needs to be tracked. Everything needs to be logged. And we need to be proactive in terms of our ability to kind of spot behavior changes that really kind of denote the fact that we're getting attacked and so the ability to kind of op, uh, launch a counterattack uh, to push these things off. And it, it, can't be, uh, over, it can't be overstated. I think that's absolutely where the risk lies in moving into the cloud. And never be afraid to change your mind, you know, in this stuff. And so CIOs should be fluid. I think a lot of problems that I run into have this tendency to be you know, static lines in the sand. They announced to the board of directors we're moving to cloud and removing these certain workloads to cloud. And if they find something that's going to be erroneous and moving that so it's contraindicated or something like that, or they're moving to the wrong cloud, that happens a lot. Perhaps it should be on Microsoft Azure and not AWS. Um, go ahead and change your mind. I, I, I think that should be applauded. I mean, if someone came to me who worked for me and said they found an issue, and even though they said this six months ago, they're going to have to change their mind and move in this direction. They should be applauded for doing that because they're saving they're saving everybody lots of trouble. And 
the reality is we have to be agile as human beings in terms of how we're thinking. And it's okay to really kind of pull the plug on something that we think it's going to be a big mistake. And I, I run into this all the time where people kind of understand there's a huge amount of risk, their, 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 their uh, information changes going forward, and it just becomes kind of a slow car wreck, you know, going forward. And just they could have gotten out of it, you know, uh, steered, you know, steered clear of the, the, of, the, of the accident, but they ended up, you know, running into big issues. And I, don't, I think that's not necessarily wise. Yeah, you're right. Great tips. It really is uh, interesting times. And like you say, if the CIOs aren't willing to embrace, I think like we've said many a time, you know, they're going to be not just not, they're going to be failing. Uh, and as we always say, it's better to fail fast than, uh, than just to fail slowly because that, that more often than not leads to death <laughs> in the business world yeah, anyway. Be willing to be willing to change your mind, be willing to, you know, operate in an agile environment and uh, work for people who applaud that. Uh, and so if you're going to get, you know, killed for that, that's not necessarily the organization should be working for. Exactly right. Great tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. And thanks for being part of the C-Suite show for another week. That's awesome. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linticum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Below in the description box, there are links to our Twitter handles as well, just if you didn't realize. And also, these shows are on iTunes for the podcast, so you, you can watch those uh, or listen to those, as well as watch us on YouTube, if you please. Thanks for watching, and remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. Until next week, thanks for watching.